you have already mentioned, you have an aid in your home, they are different cultures, they don't know everything, but as a family, it's new to the patient and it's new to the aid. The best thing to have really is to have an open door policy. When the aid comes, I would give them uh, some orientation. We all mentioned that, show them the house. And also, it's an expectation. I would ask this aid first before you ask her, you would tell the aid your expectation. My mom likes to get up eight o'clock in the morning, maybe nine, but it's different. My mom likes to um, take a shower twice a week or three times a week. All these kind of things need to be explained to the aid. This is what she likes and how she likes it. Everybody eat their eggs very differently. Somebody wants something well done, somebody wants it like not overcooked. So all those little things can get someone upset, upset someone. But if we can't explain this thing clearly, upon, like on the first day that the aid is coming, it makes a big difference to welcome them because they feel uncomfortable. It's not their house. So the same thing, ask the aid, what's your expectation of us? And let the aid tell you what the expectation is. And I would think for the first week, you check on them and ask questions. It's definitely a problem with, when it comes to the accent because I do have it too. So I know how that is. Nah. Nah. But, so what I, what I do all the time, I, I remind myself to speak slowly. I ask questions, and you can help them. If they feel uncomfortable, you are the one that have to say, say listen, you can tell me, and you can help them. And you're going to realize later on, you'll, you'll have the best relationship. I have family because I'm a so, as a social worker, I work at Bel Air. So, um, because we, I, yeah, we know each other. So I always you tell You saved them. us, but we'll tell you that later. <laughs> I, I said to her, I said, she's Look who's here. Last, we'll tell you later, last, off the, off the year. My mother was in Bel Air. This past summer, she was at Parker, which is what got her here. But Linda was amazing. My right mother-in-law was one of these people. She ran everything, so this is very hard for her. Yeah. That somebody's that my wife and we had to take over. And, and Linda had given Linda, a lot of advice into how to so get us the perspective to, of it. You know, the and point if you that remember my father-in-law, <laughs> he walked around the whole place. Okay. <laughs> And, and she'd go, yeah, he'll be passing here soon. <laughs> I, we, we explained to Linda, like, my mother-in-law is just one of these people that she ran, she ran, she was like the hard nose. She ran everything. And but that Linda was sat day. down with her and... That I don't that, know what Linda that did. That was the beginning of... <laughs> Linda's uh, got the gift of golden speech. <laughs> she really does. She really That's why we have her. <laughs> so she's very good with the families, too, and making the families understand, you know, all the sides of, of what's going on. So she's utilized... Uh, she's a social worker is underutilized, actually, in a lot of situations. And she also explained a lot of, as to how the whole system works. Because until you wait, let me ask you: Did Linda refer you to us? No. She oh, Linda. Yes and no. no okay. Yes and no. Well, she yes. referred us. I'm kidding. She, I'm joking. I was going I'm to say, she referred, oh, who did those three? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. She referred three. Three referred you. So indirectly, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a, another question yeah. completely. What happens when you run into an, uh, a situation like with a doctor's appointment where you need the aid for an extended period of time? It's a problem. Yeah. Uh, because if you're, everybody here is on managed Medicaid. Like we're not private pay, right? Okay. So the we just had this situation happen with another family where the um, the caretaker ended up uh, in the hospital, uh, the daughter of the patient, mm -hmm. um, and ended up having a heart attack and was taken to the hospital. And the aide was stuck there because the husband was with his wife at the hospital. Um, and we had to tell the families that you know the medic if the we can't ask for the authorization, you have to call and ask for an extension. Sometimes they give it, sometimes they don't. Um, in this situation, the family had to pay the extra two hours to keep that aid there because the couldn't leave the lady can't be by herself mm -hmm. um, and there was nobody home so the best thing I could say is if you can't make the doctor's appointment during the hours that the aide is there you call your case manager but I wouldn't be hopeful okay because what we're looking at is my mom needs Mohs surgery for cancer mm -hmm. at one location and then she needs to go to another location for the plastic surgeon to close it and one is in Long Beach and the other is in Rockville Center who's your managed care uh, Integra. 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 Oh, okay. Because I was going to say some of them are a little bit more flexible than others. I, I would call the case manager and explain the situation. What you can do, I was where Julia was here, but she had to go take care of her kids. I was going to ask a question. Yeah. 
Can the family call the agency and pay privately for the two hours? Yeah, or what I was going to say is what sometimes families do, and I don't know if this applies, um, and I don't know if Integra would allow this, but I would say it's worth a try. Uh, if you take two hours from a different day That's and then apply familiar. them to that day, you yeah. can. But we, you have that has to be, believe it or not, it's got to be authorized, it's got to be on paper, okay. we have to receive it. So a lot of times they'll let you uh, maneuver the hours around. Okay. Um, so that's what I would probably say you should try. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had another, just another thing. So we're coming into the not so good season of uh, weather related issues. <laughs> so um, keep in mind, I don't know every aid and I don't know every family. I don't know where you guys live. Uh, well, I know where you live. But um, the, the thing is, is that uh, um, they do take public transportation. There are weather issues. We are going to be very soon, hopefully within the next week, Week, where the other thing that we are, I, I mean, I hope you guys are proud to be with us because we do some progressive things here. We have an app that's really, that's Reliance app that we're in the process of um, integrating with the software company. And on the app, you're going to be able to download it and it's going to get the calendar. Although you guys have consistent care, you know, we're going to be able to communicate very quickly uh, through this app with our families and with the aides in the language that the aide is custom to. So um, in that, what's going to happen is because when we are, we're, we're a licensed agency, so we have to notify if there's weather-related issues going on. We're, we're mandated by Department of Health. So we would sit here, Mildred will tell you, hours and hours and hours, call every family, every aide, every family, every aide. That was one of the reasons why we developed the act. It's just going to be a simple, you know, um, the aides are, you know, if, if you're going to live out case and there's a snowstorm, that aide's not getting there. No, I have a question. Mm-hmm. A couple weeks ago, there was a snowstorm that hit in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. My mother had an aide from 2 to 7. Mm -hmm. So we called her because we knew by like 4.30, 5 o'clock or something, the weather was bad. Mm -hmm. So we called her and said, have the aide call and see, can she leave early? Now, we didn't want her to lose pay for that time. But we certainly didn't want her no, out of the Yeah, that was a bad day, though. Mm -hmm. That now, was a bad snowstorm. What happens if something like that She loses about? her pay. Yeah. She will not. She doesn't get paid. Okay. So if they leave, you gotta remember, this is Medicaid. No, you know I they understand. are regulated, yeah. and it's very annoying. So if the aid, if the aid clocks out within two hours, the aid is only paid for two hours. If they, what happens though, this is another thing to talk about too, and you'll experience this when they, you start with us. When an aid walks in the door, the first thing they should do is clock in, take the phone. Hi, I'm sorry. One second, let me pick up the phone and clock in. That's how we know that they're there. Um, and then at the end of the day, they clock out and they put their duty codes, what they performed for the day. Um, they should not be getting signs, um, uh, timesheets signed by the families because that's. We don't really accept time sheets. That's supposed to be in an emergency situation if they got there a little late or something. But every one of your aides should be clocking in and clocking out. Um, but if they clock in and then there's a snowstorm and leave two hours later, they're only going to get paid for those two hours because we can only bill for those two hours. Um, and it's all about you know the, the authorization and the billing and all that kind of stuff. So they won't get paid. But more importantly, if there's a snowstorm coming, you're going to get a call or, or hopefully when the app is developed, um, you're going to get a notification. There's a snowstorm coming. Please care for your loved one. The aides are not going to be able to get there because I can't make them go out if I'm myself are not going to be able to go out. Long hour cases, what we usually tell families um, is the aide can sleep over if you let them um, so they can stay or if there's a live-in, they're stuck. They can't go. They're, there's, they're stuck there. But short hour cases, it, it's, you know, it's not the ideal situation, but that does happen. And then you're also going to get into the situation of, you know, buses and things like that. There are sometimes they're late. You know, I'll have families every Sunday call me. The aid is late. It's Sunday. There's no transportation. You know, these people rely on public transportation. That's one of the things that we're working on with uh, local politicians and stuff to get the buses to where if you live north of uh, Hempstead Turnpike, you have a problem. There's no bus. And so these poor aides can't get up there. And they come every 45 minutes. So it's not even like you can wait. Another, like in the yeah. city, you wait 15 to 20 minutes, so another bus is coming here, 45 minutes yeah. before another one comes. Let me ask you a different question. So if if the aide is, doesn't, is not able to come in because of the snowstorm and she's losing that whatever time, can she, is there any rules like within a certain amount of weeks or something, can she, if she wants, make up the time, let's say, stay instead of four hours, five hours, or whatever it is, you know. That's all up to the managed care. You know, everything is run through them. You know, if you were, if you have a case where it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you say to us, listen, I don't need Wednesday, I'd like Tuesday, 
that has to be run through the managed care. It's not as simple as just changing the day because our authorization, we're paid based on the auth. So if the auth says Monday, Wednesday, Friday, eight hours, we provide care Monday, Wednesday, Friday, eight hours. If you have to make that flip, that change, it has to go through the managed care and then we have to get a new auth and it's just a big to do. Well, I didn't know if there was like rule, like I know in my business, we're allowed two weeks to, if I have a therapist who misses a session, Mm -hmm. I know that she has a certain amount of time no. afterwards to make it up, and then that's no. it. No, and a lot of times families don't really want the help. They'll say, "Okay, forget it for this week." You okay. know, although you have to realize, like that, that's actually something very. Uh, smart. I'm doing it so they don't lose their money. I know that's what and I was going to say. So if 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 you could take extra time, this way they, they lose really can't learners. though. It's a money thing too, so I'm not saying no. So I, I didn't know the rules. Of yeah, me. no, but more another thing. If your loved one is hospitalized um, or is, you know, please call us. 24 hours a day, even if we don't pick up the phone, it's going to say you've reached Reliance Healthcare. Please leave a message. Someone will call you back because we want to stop that aid from going. Because sure. if the aide gets on a bus, gets on a train, uses their money to go to the house, and then there's nobody there, it's not Food fair. Yeah. So they are paid per hour per. Um, if they don't work, they don't get paid. It's fee yes. for service. Yes. I mean, I, we do get benefits here, just so you know, as a company, too. We give a 401k. We give life insurance. We give um, health insurance if they want it. And we also give, uh, you know, they all get a week's vacation. So we really do have our home health aides like real employees. I mean, we, we match we the form. We recognize that they do hard, the, yeah. the, the work they do is important, and, it's, and, and they sh deserve, you know, 401k like everybody else. Yeah. I have a question to what you was just saying about extending. Um, it, they can't make it in a day. You're saying that it's up to whoever we have as the, uh, the managing uh, agency to determine. Well, the if, payer. The They're payer. The payer. Um, they have to determine if one if she can make up those hours, right? Is that what you're saying to me? No, what, what he's saying is is that if something happens and they lose their hours for that day, right. can they put it on for other time? Right. That's determined by your insurance company, the payer. We, If they have scheduled five hours a day, three days a week, that's what we're authorized to provide. So if it turns out to be two hours one day and you want to add three hours to another day, right. it has to be authorized through the payer source. But your experience tells you that they will do it? Or it they I think do it, it depends on the situation. Okay. Yeah. So it's like we we had a, a we had a family that we you know weekends are miserable. It's miserable everywhere. You know it's very very hard. People everybody wants Sundays off. So um, we had a family that didn't receive services on a Sunday because the aide called out or whatever. I don't remember. The, so they wanted to apply that Sunday hours to during the week. Right. That probably the insurance company will say okay because it was our, we couldn't staff it. Why should they lose their hours? Um, but if someone's saying I have to go to the doctor and I'm not going to be back in time, so let the aide go at two instead of four. That I don't think that they, but it's all determined by the case manager. Okay. You know, the insurance companies and you know the payers, they they are looking to provide the care, especially if it's something that they've already deemed necessary and what the hours you're entitled to. Well, see, you guys are all very nice because very we have nice. families mm -hmm. that will be like, yeah, I don't want care today as they go to the door. I'm like, do you realize that they spent whatever money coming to the door mm -hmm. to get to you, and then you like they don't matter, and they just close the door and say, no, we don't need you today. Well, that's not okay. You know, they, they spend money to come to you, and then not only do they spend money to get there, they lost the pay for the day um, because, you know, being that they're taking public transportation, it's not like we can say, okay, hop in your car and go to this person. It doesn't work that way. I wish it in, a, in an ideal world it would be, but it's not. Um, but we really are trying to, you know, figure some things out. I'm really just uh, thankful that we're, we're starting this yeah. and that we're... You're our okay, first group. You're, you're, you're a it's test important. group. You know, it's a vulnerable <laughs> Did we situation. Pass? You every, passed. Every side. So it's vulnerable for the families, and we understand that. So we understand when you're annoyed or you get a little bit, uh, you're, you're uncomfortable. But we have this because so is the home health aid. And we want everybody to kind of, we want to be on the same page and, you know, kind of bridge that gap between. And with communication, a lot of these problems can be solved, and they don't turn into big problems. It's just a conversation. Okay, you want that, or that's all right. Let's see how we're gonna we're gonna fix that, because most problems are solvable with just a matter of a conversation. Yeah, what we try to do is create the team. You know, it's not the family versus the agency, yeah. and it's not the agency and the aid versus the family. It really is the agency, the aid, and the and the family all we're together working to together to keep that person home, because that's where they want to be. You know, so that's our goal as well. Um, so I would say. 
take a listen to the podcast. It's got very good information on there. This week we're having our respite care. So, um, you know, Medicaid does pay for respite care. So if somebody actually wants to go away, um, respite does, um, you know, something that can be provided for the family member. Um, we're also having a visiting doctor service come on because, um, you know, if your loved ones are homebound and they can't get to the doctor or if it's, a, it's difficult to get them to the doctor, we have, a, you know, Medicare pays for that as well. Uh, home doctor service and all the benefits that go along with, you know, providing the home, the care in the home. Uh, we have physical therapy coming on. We have nursing coming on. You know, that's all very good information. And it all pertains to home care. i got one question. When you have, let's say, four or five hours a day, so it's not a full day, is there any issue? Because I've noticed that my mother-in-law, we have since the, you know, the AIDS, help yourself to lunch or have some. They don't want to ever eat. Is there, is there, are they not allowed to if it's a shorter day? or? No, there's nothing that really dictates that, you know, that they get 15-minute breaks. You know, we have some families that mandate, say, okay, go outside and take a 15-minute break. But you got to remember, they're there for the five hours, and they're not working for every moment of those five hours. So right. there are intermittent break times during that five hours. No, but they but can I'm, have lunch. Okay, I mean, no, because we'll say there's food. So we'll say, look, yeah, there's extra, there's, there's food. There's nice fun, you. you know, but they may eat. not eat that food, though. That's also mm -hmm. different, you know, but I'm just saying, it's like, you know, we have sandwich meat. Yeah. And all now that they're settled, and I think yeah, maybe they're comfortable now. Because yeah. 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 we want them to know, like, nice. we don't want you, you know, yeah. I don't not want to get like this. No. Now no. no. that it did the permanent age, I don't want to take it to them. What I'm half Jewish, half Italian. We feed everybody. They're very conservative. We went from doctor to doctor, and we stopped for lunch, and I said, what would you like? I'm happy to, and both two different aides both times they just said I'll have just a drink yeah and I felt bad yeah well they probably don't eat the food you know that that you or, or I don't know a lot of times they'll bring their own food a, this was in a restaurant oh well I would have eaten <laughs> <laughs> if you're buying I'm eating so it's good. <laughs> when the aides come to the um to the home we've had this situation happen before if they call if they say my child is sick I have to leave they cannot leave so please don't give them permission to oh, get that bug out of here. Uh, they, don't give them permission to leave because then then there's going to be a problem. So if something occurs and they have to leave, their first phone call is to us, and then we will speak to the family and get the permission from the family. It's not between you and the aide to say, okay, you can leave now because we need a record of it. We need to know what's going on. They can't just say, you know, uh, my my son is sick, my daughter is sick, and I have to go, and the agency will take care of it. No, they're supposed to call us. That's actually it's, a good point. That, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's fine. It's a great point that you're bringing up about things that they shouldn't be doing. I mean, I would be kind of... Oh, I can of, give you a list. They, if they, it's probably a very good orientation <laughs> because those are things that probably that are commonplace that happen that he says, okay, I have to take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. I have to leave. And mm -hmm. you don't know. You mm -hmm. really don't know, especially I don't know because this is the first time this is happening. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of cool to understand what are certain situations and scenarios that could possibly happen that shouldn't mm -hmm. be happening. They know, but what happens is we just had a, a situation where the aide told the family that he had to, she had to go. Um, and then the family called the managed care instead of calling us. So I'm like, why are you calling the managed care? You're supposed to call us so that we can intervene. They are not to leave the house, ever. Um, they're not supposed to go and make decisions between you and the family, like, because you're going to say, oh, the agency knows, okay. Unless you speak to us, I'm telling you, we don't know. Um, and I would always tell you to call here and make sure that someone here is, is, you know, saying, yes, we knew what was going on. Are you okay with it? Because if their child is sick and if you've got an eight-hour day and it's two, into two hours, we'll have to send someone to replace them. But that's something that we have to know. You know, sometimes family thinks that that the aides are calling us all the time, and we know everything. We don't. We're not there. You know, so we only know what we're told. Mm -hmm. So if we're not told anything, then I assume it's not happening. We're assuming everything is kumbaya in the house, and sometimes it's not. So what? What's your name? Steve Austin. Oh, Steve. Austin. So now who's the? Oh, who's Julia? Oh, she yeah. left. Um, That's right. Um, well, do you have questions about? I'm afraid to let you talk. <laughs> uh, you, You're you, great. He's great neck, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. He had. Uh, <laughs> I remember the girl that's there. If you said her name, I remember because she came in the other day and we were talking. She was there seven days a week, right? Don't go into all the details. He loves. <laughs> <laughs> Know. That's it. Know. That's that's how you know you have success. So, um, it, did you speak to Stephanie about her? Like, does she know that you no, like her? So, since this was for us to have communication, mm -hmm. um, we had doctor's appointments on Tuesday. I called to just remind him Monday night, yeah. and he said the person isn't coming in tomorrow. She has appointments the next two days. That's all he told me. He had no idea. Oh, that, your brother? Okay. Can you pick it up and then hang it up? <laughs> so this is nice that you're 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 the um, 
Obviously. Yeah. Right. I remember. I'm in I think Westchester. We... That's why we're late. I apologize. No. It was a very long. Trip. No, I think it's very nice that you guys came. Yeah. Well, you... we spoke, mm -hmm. and it sounded like it was a great idea. Yeah. So, so in terms of communication, mm -hmm. um, Stephen told me that the person who's there seven days a week was not going to be there Tuesday and Wednesday, and he just assumed because nobody told him otherwise. That no one was going to be there Tuesday or Wednesday. There's no communication when the maid takes off. I okay. believe that that is true. Down. But you know what I say to families, though, and just to... And then, and then maybe I want... See, I knew I was afraid to, to let you talk. A, yeah. <laughs> I decided to go to a baseball game. He said, well, he wasn't home. You know? Where I, no, or that's, where, where that's I all fair. That's a, a completely fair statement. Let, let me tell you. Well, this is what I... Mm -hmm. I was picking him up at 9 mm -hmm. to go to the doctors. Because he didn't know anybody was coming, nobody called him, nobody called me. There was a replacement, mm -hmm. which was very nice, but we didn't know that. I guess the bus must have been late. I did not speak to her, and she called him. He couldn't understand because she does have a heavy accent. Doesn't matter. She's lovely. And she must have been saying, I'm going to be late. late. Mm -hmm. He called me, and he said, I couldn't understand the person, and we have a doctor's appointment, and I didn't know what to tell her. So it was a little confusing for him. Mm -hmm. And um, we, you get the drift. Yeah. He just saw nobody was coming. Yeah. That's actually, uh, you know, another uh, issue that we that comes up a lot with families is that, and people have to realize that not that it's an excuse, but it is the truth. You know, we have hundreds of families, and we have hundreds of home health aides that work for us. So I always say to the families, like, if you know that your aide is taking off, um, and if you know that the aide is not going to be there the next day, just call your coordinator and just simply ask, listen, I know the aide is off tomorrow. Can you tell me who's coming? Because it's easier for you to make that one phone call than us to make 50. And each coordinator has you know hundreds of patients so um it's it, to me it's it's fair both sides if you know someone's not coming just give your coordinator a call um because but what you're saying does happen a lot and that's one of the other reasons why we developed that app yes but I don't <laughs> you scare me yeah. <laughs> well, what happens i have a problem with my memory he oh me too he i had a stroke so i don't remember to call anybody they're not coming all right they didn't come I'll, I'll find something to do but then they do come, and you're and not, not you're, yeah. Well, that's another thing that leads to the the right. problem of them showing up and or not getting paid for the day. Somebody was coming at one, and they didn't say he was, they were coming at one instead of at nine, which is his normal time. No, that's yeah. all fair, you know, uh, situations, and it's definitely something. That's why, like, when we're talking about the app, on the app, it's going to have uh, everybody's calendar, and the calendar is going to be updated with, if there's a change, it'll alert you that there's a change in the calendar. It's going to give you the name, the picture, and the information on the aid that's coming uh, so that we have to, because what you're saying, I have to tell you, is, is a big problem uh, for us as an agency and probably for other agencies, because when they're restaffing cases, they're not always thinking, let that family know. They should be but they're not um, and that's definitely an, an internal problem so hopefully the app will resolve that issue as well as long as people will download it you'll get a nice picture of the aid so you know if this person's coming to the door that doesn't look like who's in that picture there's a problem so uh, and you can let us know that way too cell phone app and computer app a cell phone no cell phone well it'll be to you and then you can tell him yeah I mean we're not that we're not that good yet. <laughs> yeah, most of your pa most of your patients are people that are you know they have their needs right, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are suffering from memory loss mm -hmm. and things like that. It means that most of your patients will probably have someone else on the file that's uh, coordinating, right? When when what happens is that if you don't have a backup person, it's right. really hard to provide care for. We can't be the only. Care I understand to, yeah. that, but my question is that most of your patients will have a, a second person that you're communicating with besides the patient himself. If they can't, I'm not going to say most of our patients. We have a lot of alert people. Um, okay. So th I think it's a very small population of people that can't really speak for themselves. Um, okay. And then we, we have that alert on the computer to speak to the family. But once you have someone else on the, on the file besides yeah. the actual patient, when something like that happens that the Tuesday and the Wednesday gets thrown off, does he only get the call, or does the other person get it the depends. call as well? It depends. The, the coordinators develop relationships with the, the families, and they know who they got to call. I may not know everybody because I don't have that relationship, but the way, just so you know, I don't know if it's Stephanie or, or Julia or who's going to be your coordinator, but they're going to know everything about you guys, and they're going to know the keys under the mat, the you know the lock boxes on the side of the house. They're going to have all those notations in the computer, so it, it shouldn't really happen. I, I don't know what happened here, and we'll ask about that tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, but I I mean, I don't know. Maybe they tried to get him on the phone and he didn't pick up, or they left him at. I don't know. Yeah, it was something, uh, which sometimes, is yeah, I know. Like my mother, her short term is right. Sometimes she's fine, and sometimes it's iffy. 
and they'll talk to her, and she doesn't always get the whole story and doesn't always I know, know the problem. Works. That's why I'm asking. Uh -huh. You know, like, that's why I was saying, like, you know, the puzzles and stuff are good for her, because I'm thinking now, not that it'll build it up again, but she won't keep slipping. But, yeah, we sometimes run into that, and I just... But you can have just so you know, you like what we need a phone number on our profile for the eight for mom. This is mom? mom, okay. So in the home, we're gonna have mom's phone number as the listing phone number for the because that's how they clock in. That's the only way we're gonna know that they're physically in the house is that they use her phone. But if you say to your coordinator, listen, don't call her because she's not gonna get it straight. I'm the contact, we know that. Like, we know certain families, we don't call the we don't call the, the patient, we call the families. But you'll make that needs known. Usually, Danielle will get that on the on the enrollment side. She handles all the intake. What I did is I gave my cell phone number as the primary number. Right. And I'll get people calling, you know, my mother's name is Sandra. So it's like Sandy and it's like this is her daughter, you know, and I'm like, okay, it has to do something with her care. <coughs> so that way it, it's it's easier for me to explain to her what's going on because I know what she understands. Mm -hmm. And that's why like I put you know oh. Okay, but the aide comes in and she clocks in through her phone. Okay, I didn't know that. That's uh, through the house phone. Oh, through the house phone. And if the she doesn't have phone. a phone, a house phone, she has only a cell phone. They can use a cell. We we just need to have uh, this. It, it has to be the same phone number because mm -hmm. that's what's logged into the computer. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's very you know technical. So it's but like that's, that's easy. Yeah. yeah that's easy. Yeah, and plus that's how you, or, or the, the which they don't do, but they should. There's an app on the, their, their aides can download an app that will, all they have to do is push the app button and it will tell them that they're in the house and it automatically goes to the computer oh, okay. so that they don't even have to use the phone. Is they don't think to use the that, but they. The app active now? It's already active? No, there's two different apps. Okay. One is a payroll billing app, which is what they can, um, you know, hit the app from the house, the patient's house mm -hmm. and then that's the way it activates them for their billing yeah. one of the things was that when we were talking about starting this it, you guys are already on service so it won't really except for you but um you know this is really i guess a, a an informal meeting of everybody but that really is our goal to have people before they come on service they can come and talk to us and have some expectation so that when it starts we're not yeah. they're not yelling and hating us and you know they understand that there's you know i, I had a gentleman call yesterday because the aide was very, very late, and he had a doctor's appointment with his wife. So I'm the on call, and the gentleman called up, and he was not happy because the aide was very, very late. And so I'm trying to explain to him, you know, situations happen. You know, I can't control every situation, but we can control how we react to situations. It didn't help him. He still was pissed, but at the end of the day, the aide got there. She got to the doctor's appointment, but he was livid, yeah. and they don't have to understand. You know, these aides are, you know, I wish I could... Get everybody in the car and drop them off. Are these diabetic cookies? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> no. <laughs> these are Italian cookies from the pastry across the street. They don't do diabetes. I'm going to have to teach Dana, them how to. What? You have in your podcast on November Oh, 30th, that's true. Okay, so. Yeah. No, I'm actually going to invite him um, on. But I so. think everybody, who, you know, the more the merrier. One of the things that we like to do in our podcast, which is why we're filming this today, is because we do a podcast weekly here. Of, like I said before, you take the flyer. Uh, we... The most important thing for us as a company is that families are informed. You know, they understand and they understand what goes on so that there's not this question mark every time. So we're having our, our next podcast is going to be at the Hicksville Broadway Mall that we're going to be like roaming around talking to people, um, but also getting a feel of what people think about home care and really trying to encourage people. You know, I was in aid before I became a nurse. Linda was an aide before she became a social worker. Mildred was a companion. So we all started as aides. So we're not coming from a perspective that we don't understand. You know, we do understand. And I think it's a great job. Yeah, we Anthony, do. it's a great job. It's a great job. It's a great job. And that's it's a great pay. job. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a feel, it's a feel good job. I mean, we can work with, with mechanical things, and but with a human life, you can you can gain as much as you give. And the salaries are going up. I can say what the salaries are now because there's nobody here listening to me. But they're going, some of the, the, the aides will be paid more than what my clerical people are paid. So the, the, rate, the, you know, the recognition of the job is starting to happen. And now we have to just, you know, to, get, to give them a, a pay rate is one thing. But now we have to raise a level of who's doing the job. People going into the position and how they're doing the job once they're out there, that has to change. When we have aides coming into orientation, they've never, you know, touched a patient before. They never toileted somebody before. I go out there and I help them because I do. But what they, they come in, they say, yeah, I want a 10 to 12 hour case. I was like, no, you know, a 10 hour case, you're really caring for somebody. If you never touch someone, you certainly are not starting with us with a 10 hour case. You know, you're gonna start minimal. And then when we see that you're not gonna kill anybody, um, then we're gonna move you up. <laughs> I say that jokingly, but I really do mean that. <laughs> are your rates done by the county or by the state? The state. 
and you're getting money, extra money, and you're getting raises? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> you didn't listen to what I said. The aides are getting raises. Yeah, no. Dana Arnone yes, is losing no money. Mm -hmm. Okay. The you state does. Well, listen, they deserve the money. It's a hard job. They're trying to encourage. That, they're they're, they're trying everything. to encourage people to go into the industry. Sure. But then what you have to do is you got to raise the standard now. You know, we can't have aides that, you know, that just come and go as they please and they show up to work. They don't show up to work. We have aides that will call up. It's raining outside. I can't go to work. It's raining. So they don't go. They're going to get wet. Yeah, so we've had, it's true. It is true. And I'm not joking. Yes, I wish yeah. I was. And then, you know, I, one of the things that we have that's actually not funny, but, you know, I actually have a budget for Uber. <laughs> because if they can't get to the job and we need them to go, we're Ubering people. We're like a limo service now. And that's mm -hmm. something that, you know, you never expected that, you know, and now the aides expect to be Ubered because they know that if they say no and they can't get there, I have no choice but to get them there. And we, so we Uber a lot. Not every day, not all day, but we do. Any other questions? No concern. I mean, concerns. We've uh, you know we established that there's some concerns, um, but uh, you know you, you have my card. You have my number. I probably won't return your call, but you can try. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, you want my card? There you go. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. yeah. So if you have questions, but honestly, concerns, uh, uh, issues, feel free to call me, Danielle, Mildred, Linda. Um, it's we're just we're really here we're to make here it a successful you. Uh, you know time. <laughs> Hi there, it's me again, Dana Arnone from All Things Home Care. Just wanted to uh, remind everybody to find us on Facebook, uh, iTunes, or Google Play. Uh, follow our podcast, let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions of thing, information that maybe you'd like to hear or it's something that you can have some help with or some guests uh, that you might like to see on the podcast or maybe yourself want to be on our podcast, we'd love to have you. So give us a call here, 516-308-4840. Visit us on our website, ReliancehSSNY.com. You can talk to me through the website. Please let us know what you're thinking.